In this video, I'll talk about using the first derivative to find the velocity. And here we have, if the position function of a particle is s of t equals 12 natural log of t minus 3 halves t squared, find when the particle is changing direction. First of all, let's denote some stuff here. Position function is s of t. Sometimes you'll see it x of t or even something else um, depending on uh, what the problem is talking about. But s of t I know is, is used a lot so that's what I used in this problem. Okay, uh, changing direction so I'll underline that in orange. Changing direction. Changing direction is when the velocity is zero. So you're going just a uh, little schematic here. We're going this way and then we turn around and go that way. So right here at this point is when the velocity equals zero. Right? So when V of T the velocity equals zero. At that instantaneous point when we change directions, the velocity equals zero, going from forward to backward, or from positive to a negative velocity. Think about that. That'll help you a lot, going from positive to a negative velocity. Now, how are we going to find velocity? Well, what I led off with in the beginning of this, I said I'm going to use the first derivative. And the first derivative of the position function is necessarily the velocity function. That's it. There's there are no other if, ifs, ands, or buts about that. Uh, that's that's going to be true. The first derivative of the position function will be the velocity function. Now, and a velocity does have positive and negative. Uh, in other questions, you might hear about speed. Uh, speed is just the, the absolute value of velocity. So if, you're, if your velocity is 5 miles an hour, your speed is 5 miles an hour. If your velocity is negative 5 miles an hour, your speed is still 5 miles an hour. So anyway, but we're just going to talk about velocity. I don't want to confuse the issue here. Velocity has a positive or a negative value. Now, the first derivative, let's go ahead and do that. I'll keep it in red. S prime of t equals 12, that's just the multiplier, 12 times the derivative of natural log of t is 1 over t. Check to see if we need to chain rules. The natural log of, is it something more than just, um, just t or x or whatever you have in there? Uh, it's not, it's just t, so if we did the chain rule, it would just be multiplied by 1. The derivative of t is just 1. Okay, minus... 3 halves times the first derivative of t squared, so that is 2t. These 2's are going to cancel out, so we'll just have a 3t. And I know you probably are to the point where you could have just gotten that without this extra step. I could have just written this uh, 12 over t minus 3t, and that equals the velocity function. But I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page here. That is our velocity function. So now we want to know when is the uh, particle changing direction. Absolutely, we could plug in, we could say what is the velocity at uh, um, 5 seconds, if we're dealing in, in seconds, and let's label that. We could, we could find that. We could just plug in uh, v of 5 and and just plug in 5 here. We've got 12 over 5 minus 3 times 5, and da 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 da. You know, you simplify that. So you can find the velocity, but um, that's not what we're, what we're being asked to do right now. So what we are being asked to do is find when it's changing direction. So we're going to solve for t. We're going to say, when is this bad boy equal? Oops, when is this 12? over t minus 3t, when is that velocity equal to zero? All right, real quickly, a little algebra, uh, little algebra here. I'll, I'll multiply everything by t, and I get 12 minus 3t squared equals zero. I'm going to subtract 12 and divide by negative 3, so I'll get t squared equals 4. Again, I subtracted 12 and then divided by negative 3. So that's how I got to be well, with the t squared equals 4. Take the square root of each side and I'm going to put it up here. 
and I get t equals plus or minus, mathematically we have to say plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2. Now, we are dealing with time, so luckily we get to just disregard this negative. Uh, in other applications, when you're not talking about velocity in terms of time, you, you may not be able to get rid of that negative, but here we are. So 2, so at 2, and um, this particular problem doesn't have any labels, so I'll just kind of sneak one in there. Let's, let's make it seconds, so just in case. Let's say that this problem was in terms of seconds. So what we're answering in the end is, when is this changing directions? And the answer, the answer is, it changes directions. The particle changes directions. And that is when the velocity equals zero, and that is at t equals two, and then I'll put in brackets here, seconds or minutes or whatever, however the the problem is is defining it for for the question that you are working on. So I'm just trying to make this general for you. So we've used the first derivative to find the velocity.